Hey guys and welcome back to another video and today I have a really nice one for you guys because today we're gonna talk about my attacks of the Clash of Clans World Qualifier, the first part. So how does the qualifier work? Actually it's like a two week at event, which means so far all of the matches were played until we reached the top 64 teams and uh, well, so, so far we had to play three matches. I will show you guys all of them. So far I went perfect, three attacks, three triples. And if you, get like, uh, if you guys like today's video, make sure to vote above me because if you guys would like, I can do the same with the attacks of Eve check. He went three out of three as well. Lex as well, so great. Uh, great first start into the qualifier for us. And uh, well, I mean, let's get started. One more thing, right now there are once again offers in the ch uh, in the in the game <laughs> and if you want to buy those make sure to have a creator code in your settings if you want to support me make sure to type in it's over there just remember this creator code is working for all of the supercell games which means for example for brawl stars or for clash royale as well but now let's get started um i obviously double check with the ESL elements if it's okay to show those attacks and they said it's okay to show all of the um it's okay to show all of the bases and attacks on the teams which were already out of the tournament. So the three matches which we played in the ESL qualifier were those three. Um, those three. Th uh, this one and this one was like um, two other tournaments. But we want to concentrate on those three. And this is the first one. So we won 13 to 11. Uh, like I said, overall we had a really good one. A uh, really good run. Um, like I said, Lex, Evecheck and me all went perfect. Um, over those three matches and I want to show you guys the first one it's on number five and Once again, I want to talk about a bit more about the base identification part because that seems to be a topic Which a lot of people are asking for and I want to do this a little bit more on this part of the qualifier videos because We obviously think a lot about what could be possibly entries what could be possibly a baited entry and stuff like that So what was the pro approach on this base? Normally what we do, we throw a couple of ideas on the base and as soon as we have a couple of, of ideas which we like, we we go through to the next base and to the next base and as soon as we have like all of the bases, like overall ideas for those, um, we kind of like divide the bases by, okay, I don't know, Lex, you're going for this base, Eve check hitting this base, Hex this and so on. And um, on this base, we obviously had a couple of ideas as well. And then it kind of depends on the attacker to choose which idea uh, he is going for. One thing which we agreed on is first thing, those three ground expos are a little bit annoying to charge, which means charging on the right side of the base is kind of out of the out of the window. We we won't do that. So, but at the same time, because there are so many ground expos on this part, this means this leaves the left part of the base kind of open because there's only one expo and this is set to air, which means charging on the left side of the base seems kind of Okay, so the first idea someone came up with was the uh, was the Yeti blimp trying to like f uh, get a couple of loons and then just the Yeti blimp in here. You can lure the clan castle or like if I, you should be able to lure the clan castle and then you could charge in at the top side and play the hybrid kind of over here with the king over here and that's that's the idea basically. Which first obviously sounds really good, um, but the only bad thing about this is that. I really did a lot of Yeti blimp attacks uh, in the last qualifier and at some point I ran into a baited entry. So from this point on I always try to not use those Yeti blimps because <sighs> it feels so bad when you're, when you're running into a bait like this. It's, it's so annoying because you can't do too much about that. So since you have so many like black holes over here like spots where you can't really predict any traps for example if there are Tesla over here uh, it's really hard to trigger any black mines which might be located over here or a tornado trap so it's really hard and really risky to do this yeti blimp at least in my opinion but we said okay a couple of people like the plan with the yeti blimp if those people might uh, have to attack this base they would go for it i had a second look at the base and one thing which i found kind of interesting are those two dead zones over here this one and this one which means there are no buildings in there and normally you can abuse those dead zones if you think there are no tesla I thought, okay, maybe they're over here Tesla because of the Yeti blimp, but there are no Tesla for sure over here. That was my, my gut feeling. So it's kind of like a mind game as well at that point. So what I was thinking is like, 
Let's funnel over here. Let's get rid of that trash over here. And then get the queen to the top. Warbreaker hit twice. And then get into this compartment. This gets basically the same as the other queen charge. But instead we do not have to use the yeti blimp. And instead if this attack is baited. We can get like all of the black mines with the loons after like back to back to back. So that was in my opinion the way safer approach. Because I like the hybrid part over here. It feels like a pretty good um, natural pathing for the hybrid. So I like the idea over there. So now the only thing which we have to th uh, think about is how do we find this top sign? And since there's not too much damage, we could just use a wizard or like stuff like that. But if there are Tesla in between, this is kind of risky. So I, what I was thinking is like if I use the king over here, which is going like something like this, <laughs> um, he will not only funnel over there, but as well, if I'm getting into the danger zone with like all of those scatter shots and then the ground expo the warden everything and obviously the sweeper pointing that way as well if i get into the danger zone my king should help the queen with the tanking so this is what i was uh, thinking like okay let's do the queen walk something like this let's use the king something like this and then let's use the hybrid and the only thing which is like open is this part where you can just use the siege barracks that was the idea which worked which i was going for so I think we should just take a look at it and uh, see how it works, yeah? I mean, you guys already know that it's going to be a triple, but still, things can go wrong, things, things can go bad or uh, good, doesn't really matter. So let's take a look at how exactly it will, uh, it will go. Um, as you guys can see, I used uh, Ice Golem in the beginning as well. Why exactly did I use that? The reason for that is that I did not want to drop my healers right in the beginning. If I would have dropped my healers, something like there, the healers would have been dragged over like this. And if you take a look at the ranges of the multi inferno tower and of the air defense, it's kind of likely that those healers would have get shot. At the same time, I do not war want to war break in over here because then my queen might go to the enemy single inferno tower, which is like a big no-go because otherwise she's got just getting stuck and might go around this corner. So I had to war break in kind of uh, at the top side. So this is why I brought the ice golem to be able to delay my healers. And like I said, the king is getting into the action at the top side slowly but surely and meanwhile my queen is taking out the enemy queen with not too much damage on her which is awesome for me and now the queen is getting slowly but surely deeper into the base but one thing which i didn't thought about is with using all of those um final troops like the ice golem like the baby dragon and all of those things and obviously like four coco loons which means the eagle is getting activated way earlier than i thought so what this is like the bad thing about this is that the eagle is shooting my healers which is never a good thing this means already three healers are down and the last remaining three healers are having basically no health so at this point i had a couple of options first off i tried to kind of protect my queen with using like more freezes etc for her but since there are not too many healers left i thought like okay let's just ignore that let's ignore the queen hope for the healers switching over doing some things over there which they are doing at the moment, even though they're basically no health. Um, but still trying to help a little bit and just concentrate on my on my hybrid. The first freeze is going down on the eagle. And at this point I was thinking like, okay, so far everything's looking pretty good. We have one rage to spare and one heal spell still left. So what co could go possibly wrong? What is the only thing which can defend this base right now? And the only thing which I came up with was the single from tower. The single front on the left side, and this is why I'm still delaying the last freeze because my Royal Chamber is now getting over into the danger zone for him or for her. And this means I have to use the freeze spell over here to make sure that the Royal Chamber is not getting completely fried by the single front tower. And now with the Royal Chamber ability, this means the uh, single front tower is getting taken down. And this is, like I said, this was like the only thing which could go wrong and which could de uh, defend this base. But uh, well, with the safe freeze, this was a safe call, and this means this is the first attack. Um, which I did in the tournament. Let's take a look at the next base and let's take a look at the next attack. And like I said, let me guys know if you like those more more in-depth uh, guides or like more in-depth explanations on why exactly I did which entry kind of. Next, uh, next war, we did a perfect war, which was uh, kind of nice. And uh, I attacked number four. So let's take a look at that. And they, they do not have really bad base or anything. Like this is a proper base, like normal base. And on this one, we had different approaches. The first idea came by Nick and he was saying like, okay, use your heroes at this side and uh, the other, like 
split up your heroes, funnel those two sides, use the uh, dragons into this part of the base with only one rage, and then you have like bats and five freezes for the back end for this part. So that was an idea which he came up with kind of quickly, and we thought like, yeah, this, so this sounds pretty good. Um, the only thing which I personally didn't really like too much um, was that the bats are really spread out. So this means the bats have to take basically like from this part up to this part, kind of depending on how far the heroes will get, obviously. But still, this is a kind of wide pathing for the bats, which is crazy. So even though you have five freezes, it will be kind of tough to get through that. So this is like the only thing which I didn't like. So I was like, okay, the plan looks good. We can still do that. But I will just take a second look at the base and see if I can come up with something else. Um, but if it's something... If it's not really working, we can just go with the drag red plan. So the next thing which I uh, took a look at, because Nick was like having the idea after like a second, basically. So <laughs> I had a second look at the base and was like, okay, even though the base has four ground expos, take a look at the range. So this expo can shoot uh, uh, up to this point, this expo up to this point. On the other side, this expo up to this, this expo up to this. So this means... God damn it. Okay, thank you. Thank goodness. Um, this means um, even though we have four ground expos, those expos can't reach that far because they're really one-sided. Like two expos on the bottom left, two expos at the top right. So if those expos, for example, if those expos would have been over here, this is way more difficult to charge. But instead, those expos are kind of one-sided, which means if you charge in here, you just basically don't care about those two expos. If you charge in over here, you don't care about the other expos. Expos. So what is the next approach? The next thing which I'm thinking about is, okay, we have basically two ground expos on one side, which we are going to charge. Now on the other side, we have two more ground expos, which we could try to abuse. So this means charging one side and the other side with something with air. For example, dragons, Lalo. So I thought, okay, let's take a look at Lalo. Do I get the enemy heroes? Like the enemy heroes like uh, Royal Champion and Queen. And there they are, right next to each other. So what is the next approach? Next approach is like, okay, if I charge in over here, I can try to do a double layer over here, charge in uh, the entire side, looks perfect. Let's take a second look at the base, kinda. So the second look was, obviously, how do I do the funnel? And second thing is, do the wall breaker actually work? And the bad thing about that is, if you're charging like this, you probably will like skip this um, this elixir storage and you might skip this air defense. What this does is obviously the the um, the the wall breakers might target this compartment and obviously the healers might get shot if my queen is going like this way and luring the healers into the other air defense. So this is already not working. So the second approach was like okay let's do a queen knock into the into the compartment which means like from the flank. So something like this. Then I needed to funnel over here, obviously somehow with like loons or baby dragon, I would get rid of all of this kind of quickly, wall break the queen in, use the king at the top side, and then just wall break it once again because those two compartments, or like the big two compartments, um, like this one and this one, they're empty, so everything should work, kinda. And then the Lalo, what about, like what is happening with the Lalo? We took already out all of this, like this is what we try to take take out kind of and then like wherever the queen is heading kind of over here um so what do we do with the lalo and the lalo was planned like when i'm doing a blimp from over here for the town hall with like an with like super goblins in there because there can't be any giant bombs around the town hall and then like the normal lalo just into the defenses over here um this looks pretty good even though this reaper is really annoying over there but there's just no damage. Like as soon as we took out those three defenses, there's no damage anymore, and which is which is crazy nice for us, obviously. So that was that was the approach. That was that was the idea. I thought like, okay, looks really nice. Uh, I like queen charges way more personally, and I was in the end the guy who had to check the base. So uh, yeah, I was like, okay, let let's try it. So let's try to take a look at the base and the attack. Um, you guys can see the army. I used two super war breakers, one hound only because I had the second hound and the blimp uh, with the super goblins together. Used the um, couple of loons for the funnel with the baby dragon. Used the queen over there. And because this angle is like kind of obvious for a yeti blimp, I thought like 
I thought, okay, let's go for the Coco Loon. And there it is, the Black Mine, nicely, ca uh, nicely caught. Now the Queen is like getting kind of low, so I have to use the Queen ability soon because the Royal Champion will get onto my Queen really soon. Um, so there's the Rage. And now the next thing which I'm doing completely wrong. So when you're having two defenses back to back, like over here, if you want your king to go to the right, you need to place your king on the right. If you want to have your king go into the left, you need to place your king on the left. Because why exactly is that the case? If you have those uh, buildings and you place like over here the king, the king will go to the barracks, to the gold mine, to the cannon, to the mortar, to the cannon. That's his pathing. So this is why you always have to place the king on the side where you want him to have, to go to basically. When you have like those double, double stacked um, buildings. The same over here. I wanted my king to go to the top side. But I don't know why I dropped him on the left side. So this means my king would go like this. Which is not a good thing because I want to wall break my queen obviously in there. And now the king is going like this. Which is not good. Like this was not... Uh, this, this is not good. Okay. So we can try to come back. At this point I was like, oh my freaking god, what did I miss? This guy is having actually super goblins in his clan castle. I don't know if it was a troll or I don't know if it was... I just don't know. Um, so I was a bit confused at that point. And uh, well, I was just happy that I was going through all of this without having uh, lost my queen. So the next wall breaker is rolling in, getting the wall open. But at this point the town hall... Uh, the eagle is activated, which is this time going for my queen. I don't know when the, the eagle is going for my queen and when not for the healers. I feel like the healers are as grouped up as the last time. Now the second front tower is on my queen, the eagle is on my queen as well. I'm using the queen ability. Um, the, the blimp is getting in there. There was actually a black mine, which I didn't expect, but the blimp is actually making to the town hall, which is awesome. Next town is coming out. Black mine is getting soaked up by the first town. The town hall is going down because of the super goblins. Queen is going down as well. Royal champion on the right side is doing his thing over there, getting rid of the scatter shop, which is nice. And now... Um, the Lado is coming in. Even though the Sweeper is annoying as hell, well, there's no damage, so it's kind of funny. Like, those loons are slowly but surely making to the other side. Um, so, what could I have done different? First off, the King was a really bad thing. The next thing, I just should have drawn a couple of archers, placed two, archer, two archers over here, dragged the healers over. I don't know why I didn't, that, I didn't do that. But now, with the last rage on the, on the loons, this is an easy snag. And we can speed through the last couple of seconds because this won't be any close on the power. Only close thing was the time. But, uh, well, this was another triple for me. So this means we have one last attack to go for. And like I said, if you guys like this approach on the videos with like more, more explanation, kind of, uh, let me know. And let me know if I should do the same with the attacks of Eve check. So, um, next, or like the last war is this one. I was going, I think, once again, number four. Yes. Once again on number four. Okay, this is like a trophy base. This is like a trophy base. And what you normally want to do on those Caesar bases, I mean, I did so many videos on that. Two approaches. First approach, charging right into the town hall. Second approach, getting the walk from the flank into the town hall. So we have those three options, which I normally always go for one of those. Which is the best option? Which should you go for? So the first option with going from the six o'clock side is it's really tough because you can't really you can't control your queen that good and on both sides there's like the air defense then you have like the single inferno tower kind of inside so it's really hard to do the bottom one so we have two options left one two what should we go for what is the difference and the main difference on those two are the expos we have on the right side an air expo and in behind a ground expo on the left side we have a ground expo. And then the air expo in behind. So now the question to you guys, which is the better side? Do you know? So let's, for example, go for the right side. If we walk over here, Queen will slowly but surely go, get over here, get for this, uh, go for this uh, expo. Even though the expo is shooting later, obviously down on the left side, um, as soon as you're going for this expo, the back expo is on your Queen because expo can reach her. On the other side, let's do the example on the other side. If my queen is going like this, shooting this expo, the back expo is not on my queen, which means overall less damage. Obviously, the expo is shooting earlier at her, 
but still it's always better to charge early into a ground expo that's always always better so since we already figured that out okay it's going to be the left side the next problem is this freaking stupid air defense um this air defense is kind of in the back like in the second row which means if i place my queen if i place my healers those healers will be most likely getting dragged into the range of the air defense which is not nice um and this means I had to come up with, with something to be able to delay my healers. So what I came up with is using a Cocoloon, a baby dragon over here, and then a wizard to support. As soon as the Cocoloon is dead, the Archtower will shoot on my, um, on my baby dragon. Then I can place my queen, let her walk over here, and support the queen with an, with an ice golem once again. This ice golem will tank the cannon and the ground expo, and this means I can use my healers like somewhere over here. This should be delay, or this should delay the healers that they will never ever get in range of this air defense. As easy as that. What is the next thing to do? As soon as I charge in over here, my queen is something like this. She will probably took out something like this roundabout. This is what the queen should, should have taken out at this point. The next thing, I still have my king, I still have my uh, siege barracks. So it's kind of easy to say they will just go over here. Maybe some of the troops will go inside. That's totally fine. But either way, this is the hybrid pathing, getting into the back end, and then my queen can like still access all of this. I will bring super uh, two super wall breakers. The first wall break is meant to be over here, so the queen can reach the single inferno tower. The second one, if my queen is like going around, um, is meant to be over here. If this inferno tower is somehow surviving, because so my queen needs to act, needs access to the last inferno tower. This is the plan. This is pretty straightforward. This is what I came up with kind of uh, in the first couple of seconds because like I said I attacked tons, millions, whatever how many uh, bases with those seizures set up so I was kind of kind of confident going into this so let's take a look at the attack so um, I hope I was able to explain everything um, so that you guys were able to understand my thought process like I said Kokoloon then as soon as the baby dragon is getting targeted my queen in behind another Kokoloon for my heroes later on uh, then the the ice golem tanking cannon and ground expo as predicted and now the um, arch tower on the left side is going down which is awesome for us and as soon as the the ice golem is dead we're starting off with our healers like i said like over here they should be always out of range of the stupid air defense on the second row um i would just like leave the range open for you guys and now slowly but surely the queen is approaching the enemy queen so i have to rage even though right now i do not need the rage but as soon as my queen is stepping forward, she's approaching the enemy queen, so I need that. A nice Kokodun to soak up another black mine. Queen is going to the bottom. There are three ice creams in there, which is awesome for me because there's not those stupid split CCs, which I freaking hate. Like, do you know those 30 archers and 15 goblins? And then you're luring out only 25 archers in the first couple of uh, seconds. And you can't use a poison because there are still like 1 million troops in the clan castle, which can't be killed without. We can hate those CCs on Queen Chargers, but either way, Queen is activating the Town Hall, and this means my troops can approach the Town Hall, so so far everything is looking really good for us. Our super, uh, whatever, like how do you, uh, the, the Gobl, uh, the, the Pekka, <laughs> that was a tough approach. The, the Pekka and the King are still alive, they're getting rid of the outside buildings, now going inside. I, now the next thing, I'm freezing the right side. Why exactly do I do that? I could have frozen the, right, uh, the left side as well, but I froze the right side because this cash shot is just sitting tanked by my queen, which is perfect. Like I do not need another rage whatsoever. And the right scatter shot was on my on my hybrid, and I just do not want to have that because scatter shots are scary, scary, scary things. So meanwhile, the uh, royal champion is getting beaten up kind of hard. Um, the hawk riders are like approaching the last inferno tower, so this means the last super ball breaker is kind of wasted. But we still have the rage. I'm saving the rage right now because. Why? Because I think the only defense right now which could have defended this attack was the single inferno tower. So I needed to be able to approach the single inferno tower as quickly as possible if somehow the single inferno tower was surviving. That was kind of my, my thought process. So this is why I thought the uh, this is why I saved the rage and I saved the super ball breaker if something was going wrong. In the end, I just swagged the rage because those Caesar bases are trash. And uh, well, that that's that's about it. That's that's it. I hope you guys like this uh, this more explanation video. Um, like I said, if you guys like the video, make sure to, to like the video and um, 
go in the uh, how do you say the, the poll in the in the beginning um, and let me know if you guys would like to see this exact same video with the attacks of Eve Check. He tripled three times as well, like I said. So um, yeah, let me guys know. And then thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys back tomorrow. And until then, see ya and bye bye.